Privacy invasion isn't something student journalists deal with every day or even every year, but there are some things that every good student journalist should know. Media lawyers will tell you there are four main elements to consider around privacy. False light, misappropriation, intrusion, and public disclosure of private facts. It's possible that all of these could be an issue in student media, but the last two are probably the most likely to come up. The intrusion concept is that people have a reasonable expectation of privacy in certain situations. At a school, people in bathrooms, locker rooms, nurses and therapists' office are generally going to be considered to have an expectation of privacy, so it would be a violation of privacy to take pictures or videos of someone in those places. Pretty obvious, right? But something like a hallway, a cafeteria, an athletic field, people don't have a reasonable expectation of privacy in those places. Classrooms are generally not a place where people have an expectation of privacy, but it's definitely complicated. The details of the situation would be important to consider. Another tricky area is the public disclosure of private facts, basically revealing someone's private information. There are a lot of factors to consider for this, but let's look at some common scenarios you might run into. What if you heard a rumor that an employee at your school had been arrested for driving under the influence last weekend? Would it be an invasion of privacy to write about that? Well, if you checked with the police where the incident was said to have happened and they provided you with a report on the incident, that's public information. So that arrest is not a private fact. If instead of it being an adult, if it was a student at the school who was a minor, would it be an invasion of privacy to write about that? It's definitely trickier legally with minors than adults, but if you'd also have to look at the ethical elements. What's the public good that would come from publishing that information? It's conceivable that there would be a good reason, but it's probably rare. It's the could you publish versus should you publish question there. When teachers leave schools in the middle of the year, it often creates curiosity, something journalists want to explore. What about a scenario where a teacher is gone on Monday morning and all their classes have been taken over by substitutes? Rumors could be flying around pretty quickly and good journalists might help by getting the truth out there, unless you'd be violating privacy with a public disclosure of private facts. You might learn from reliable sources that the teacher is getting intense treatment for a physical or mental health issue. Or maybe you learn that the teacher's parent is dying and they want to be with them. Those would probably be private facts, something you shouldn't make public without getting written consent first. As always, when you have a tricky situation, it's best to consult experts like our friends at the Student Press Law Center. For the Scholastic Press Rights Committee, I'm Trip Robbins.